Hello there, this is Steve Donahoe from Angelic Ministries again. And this next lesson is to actually give you information in regarding to once you've accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, how may you be saved and what is the salvation requirements of being saved and the message of salvation to all that once you've accepted Jesus Christ in your heart that we are going to be saved because of our sinful nature yet we still have our sinful nature in us but it is remembered no more by the blood of Jesus Christ and it is erased from the book of life and blotted out but can it be erased and then put back in the book of life yet again uh, we're going to look into this and see if this is true or not. So, please listen to the word of God. And I will just put my comments in between on certain things that I hear. And comment on it. Okay? Thank you. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Okay, so this is um, Saul that was originally actually um, in the law as well, and the Pharisee himself. And when he was in the position of actually persecuting Christians, he had a revelation or he got struck by Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus and about persecuting his people. And he is one of the, the disciples or the main characters that is in the New Testament that is written most of the epistles uh, compared to even the other actual disciples of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and all uh, actually he has written more in the book in the, in the New Testament at the end of it uh, that Jesus has used him in mighty ways but he also told him he would suffer for his namesake as well. So this is just information that he put in from the Holy Spirit when he was actually starting to preach to others and all and to brothers in Christ that he was supporting as well and trying to give them strength too. But he was also sternly warning him about certain things too as well and uh, stay in faith and stay strong but he was also talking to the unbelievers as well so we're going to continue on with the, the lesson for Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law that the person who does the commandments shall live by them but the righteousness based on faith says do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down or who will descend into the abyss that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Okay, so it's talking about proclaiming the word of faith. But it, the condition I was talking about in the first lesson is a condition to be met. And it starts with a small little word <coughs> and the word is if which means it's a condition okay a condition to be met for it to actually be completed okay and when I talk about one saved always saved as being such of what they believe in I use a word that is alignment with God's word in the Bible that could state it differently 
And this one completely states it differently. It tells you straight away. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, number one, you have to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord and then believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay? So read this properly because there's, there's a condition. You must confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and then believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. In other words, it's, it's a confession with your mouth to say that Jesus Christ is the Lord and what he has done for you and to come into your heart. And a lot of ones saved always say, say this is works. This is not works. This is actually how to get saved, okay? That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord and, and you want him in your life, but yet you have to confess it first, like when they say you don't need to do the sinner's prayer. Well, it's not really a sinner's prayer. It's kind of like if, if you give someone some information and they don't know what to say and they don't know how to do it, then you lead them into a prayer to help them and support them of it. It's not that we're using a sinner's prayer to force them into repentance, okay? There, we are directing them to say what we say. So, kindly, if we would say, and we go out in the streets and say, um, uh, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And they say, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. Um, do you know about Jesus? Oh, yes, I do know about Jesus. But do you have a relationship with Jesus? There's two sides to the story here, that you can know Jesus, but you do you have that knowledgeable relationship with Jesus Christ? And if so, then we'll ask them that, can you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord? And they will say to us, well, we don't know what to say. And I said, well, do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and was resurrected and was put on the cross to take all your sins? Do you believe that? And I said, yes, I do believe that. Well, it's one thing in believing that, but you have to first confess with your mouth about Jesus Christ and they said well I don't know how to do it and I said may I lead you into a prayer to be able to, to show you and teach you and they said yeah sure so we would say dear Jesus I come before you and uh, I believe what you did on the cross for me that you put yourself on the cross to save me from my sins that I will be saved and, and this is just an example, okay? So you've literally told this person because they don't know what to say. So you're asking them to repeat what you're saying. That the Holy Spirit is giving to you to say that person to wants to be saved, okay? So this is not works. This is something that it, it's works of the Spirit because it is guidance to that person that needs to know how to be saved. Excuse me. So once that is done, and you, you give them the prayer to what it is, and then you tell them that now do you believe in your heart that God raised from the dead and why you were put, he was put on the cross? And they say yes, and then they are saved. Okay? So there is a condition to be met, and they won't put this out, that this is conditioned. The condition is what they say is... Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was put on the cross and he took away all your sins for eternal security. But if you look in the Word, it doesn't actually state that. This is what I'm trying to say. And, and I just want to try to direct other people that are kind of confused in this that there are conditions to be met. And that is an if. That is a very, very important word, if you confess with your mouth. So let's just continue on with the, the, the word in the Bible, okay? I'm not changing anything, and I do not change anything, and I'm reading it in context as it meant to be done. And sorry about this thing that's come up. They're telling me I'm getting this bonus to play this game or whatever. If you see that at the top, uh, yep, that's a little bit of my <coughs> addictions. I like to play games. 
and I get these um, notifications. So anyway, let's continue on with the, with the lesson. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How the so then we hear about whoever calls on the Lord will be saved. So again, it is something on a calling of professing a verbal commitment. You have to call on the Lord to be saved. You cannot just accept him in your heart and just say, uh, all right, I believe in you, Jesus Christ, and now you're saved. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Okay. See, the thing is, God knows your heart, and God knows if you're truthful or not. But the reason that you have to do that, and there's a part in the, in the Bible when, when Jesus is actually talking and he had his disciples that they were going to eat before washing their hands. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I've um, got to go back to my word on that, uh, they said something to Jesus. Why do the disciples not wash their hands when they eat? And this goes into the, the actual process of salvation that people have got to look into this as well of what actually Jesus said. So I'm going to pause this right now and I'm going to find it for you and, and just show you and I'm going to read it to you. Okay, this is going to be the verse that I want to show you about that which defiles. And it says, Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples disobey the tradition of the elders? For they don't wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered him, Why do you also disobey the commandment of God? It's because of your tradition. But God commanded, honour your father and your mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever may tell his father or his mother, whatever help you might otherwise have gotten from me is a gift devoted to God. He shall not honour his father or mother. You have made the commandment of God void because of your tradition. You hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophecy of you saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth, and honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine rules made by men. He summoned the multitude and said to them, Hear and understand. Now this is the most important part of this, okay? Of what you need to hear. That which enters into the mouth doesn't defile the man, but that which proceeds out of the mouth defiles the man. And the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? So if we go into it, and to explain the parable to us is what they wanted to know, that this is what it actually means, okay? So don't you understand that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the belly or the stomach and then out of the body? In other words... Whatever you put into your stomach is not unclean. But the things which proceed out of the mouth come out of the heart. Listen to this very carefully, okay? The things which proceed out of the mouth come out of the heart and they defile the man. So, for out of the heart come forth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, sexual sins, thefts, false testimony and blasphemy. These are things which defile the man, but to eat with unwashed hands doesn't defile the man. So what he was trying to say was that when we speak something, it comes from the heart. When we're not saved, when we are in our worldly 
environment before we knew Jesus Christ. Whatever we would say out of our mouth and evil thoughts and everything came from the heart, okay? It literally came from the heart. And when we speak it forth, it comes out of our mouth is because our heart is not right with God. It's in the world, okay? So what you have to understand here when it relates to the scripture about if you profess with your mouth, understand one thing. If you are not saved in that period of time, all the evil comes from your heart and you speak it and you act upon it and you do it, okay? So you've spoke these things of evil, you've put it into existence and it comes to pass. But you have to understand what Jesus is trying to say that all uncleanliness comes from the heart. But in order for that uncleanliness to come out, it has to be spoken, okay? So when we go back to if you profess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and what he has done for you, then you eradicate that evil from your heart because once you've professed with your heart, you have to understand this, once you've actually professed, sorry, professed with your mouth that Jesus Christ at what he did on the cross, I believe Jesus Christ at what you've done on the cross for me, that you took all my sins upon yourself to save me from going to hell so I can live an eternal life with you and my, my sins have been forgiven. So that's what you would say. You profess that, but then... The second condition is that you have to believe that with your heart. See, there's two conditions to be met, and this is what they don't tell you. You just do not believe in your heart that you have been saved. Because if you listen and you believe in your heart and you have not professed it, what does it say in the word here? It says all evil comes from the heart. So you haven't professed it, so that evil is still inside your heart. You have not got rid of it. This is what they don't want to preach there, okay? They don't want to preach this, but it's true. This is the Word of God, and it's telling you right now. And you have to, you have to show other parts of the, the verses to explain this. Don't you understand that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the belly and then out of the body? So there's no big deal of what goes into your belly at the start. But the things which proceed out of the mouth come out of the heart and they defile the man. They literally defile the man. Because what you've done, you said, all right, I accept. You haven't said, Lord, I accept you. Jesus Christ, come into my heart right now. And that's what you should be saying. Come into my heart. So as soon as you say, Jesus Christ, come into my heart, the Holy Spirit can enter into your heart to take away all that vile rubbish that you had previously of all your sin and your worldly desires and your flesh nature and whatever it is, and the Holy Spirit will start living in your heart to convict you and guide you into the right way of thinking. But you must say it first in your mouth. You cannot just say it and think of it in your heart and you're going to be saved because you haven't professed it and it hasn't come out. See, you've got to understand this. It has not come out yet. It's still built inside your heart. If you do not profess it with your mouth, your sin is still in your heart. You have not, you accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, but you have not done the first step. The first step plainly says, confess with your mouth. In other words, what happens when you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will not speak, excuse me, and have, and have these evil thoughts and murders and adulteries of sexual sins and thefts and testimony when you've accepted Jesus Christ in your heart because now you've allowed the Holy Spirit to come inside you and live in you and direct you and convict you and guide you. This is a very, very important part of a passage that you need to understand to actually be saved. It's one thing in saying in your heart, I believe Jesus Christ, in your heart, 
in your thoughts in saying that, but you haven't professed it, it hasn't come out, so the Holy Spirit can literally come inside you to not cover up your sins, but convict you of them when you do it and guide you when you're doing wrong. You need the Holy Spirit to be able to guide you when you're doing wrong. And that's called repentance, okay? That is repentance. Repentance means a change of mind, but not a change of mind, a change of heart to turn away from your evil and turn back to God or turn back to Jesus Christ. That's what repentance means, okay? Uh, to repent is not... There's, there is no repent of sin. There's Now, when I say this about once saved, always saved, they will say there is no repent of sin. And that's true. There's nothing in the Word of God that has those three words together, repent of sin. Okay? Uh, but there's turning back to God. But in order to turn back to God, you have to profess. And they don't say that but you need to profess with your mouth to turn back to God. You literally verbally have to say it. You can't just say it in your mind and think it's going to be done. It has to be done for your evil to be released. Listen to this. This is what God is trying to tell me, and not too many preachers will tell you this, but it's something that you need to listen to and to, to realize that you are secure in your salvation if you do this. And that means when you do wrong, profess it. Profess again. It's not works, people. It is not works. This is works of the spirit. It's not works of the flesh. It's not works that you have to do it to earn your salvation. Okay? This is what they're trying to teach, that you have to make your, you have to work to earn your salvation. That is not true. What you're doing it is you're working for Jesus. Okay, they're heavenly works. You want to do that because you want to do things for Christ, not to glorify yourself, but to glorify him who has changed you from a new creation, from the old, the old is gone and the new has begun, as it says in Corinthians. But you have to understand this is what is the requirement to be met to literally be cleaned of your sin. It's not that you're cleaned from the future because you can sin again and all, but once you've professed it again with your mouth, it's blotted out again, okay? Now, you can't continue to sin and willfully sin and allow it just to say, oh, it's okay, because what has happened, and if you haven't professed it in the first place and it's building up inside your heart and you've never released it in the first place, that's a very, very dangerous situation to be. That's what once saved, always saved is trying to say that you have eternal security by the Holy Spirit has come inside you and he defends you for everything that you've done in the future. But it, it specifically states of what you have to do, okay? You literally have to do this to be able to be saved and in turn mercy and grace is put upon you you have grace the gift that was given to you but there is a condition to be met okay so this is the second teaching and i will show you other teachings as well that are in alignment with god to what he says that you need to continue in your walk to be saved it does not mean the gift was given to you. That is correct. The gift was given to you. Grace was given to you as a gift and it cannot be taken back. And that's true. Once saved, always says it cannot. It will not snatch that from you. You can never snatch it. And that's true. He cannot take that back. But the thing is, what they will not tell you is that you can give it back. You can give it back by willfully sinning and continuing to harden yourself towards God because repent means to keep turning around. Uh, keep turning around, you do it once, okay? And then you're okay. you got the green light to do whatever you want. No. Repent turns into repentance. Repentance is a continuing thing of requiring to do it Repent is doing it once, 
Repentance is a continuation of something that you need to do. In other words, that if you do sin or anything like that, there's nothing wrong with going up to the altar and asking forgiveness, or if you've done wrong, asking forgiveness from God. And he'll hear that and he'll listen to that because he knows that you are speaking to him and praying to him. And you need to pray. You need to continue to pray. And I'll show in the next lesson how many times in the Bible does it say that to the disciples that they had to pray for one another to strengthen each other and they had to pray for other people. That is not works, people, of what you call of trying to make your way into salvation for your eternal security. That is not. That is works for the glory of God, okay? There's such a difference in works, okay? There's fleshy works, there's um, heavenly works, and there's there's egotistical works, okay? So anyway, this is just what I want to give in the second lesson, and I will continue on to show you that if you are actually in confusion about once saved, always saved, there are conditions to be met, and don't let them fool you otherwise, okay? Thank you, guys. God bless.